Welcome back to our breakdown of the Cybersecurity Incident Response Playbook published by CISA. In this eight part series, we are taking a look at the Incident Response Playbook, breaking it down section by section. This is episode five, Eradication and Recovery. If you haven't seen the other episodes, make sure you go back and catch those. There is some context depending on the episode from what came before it. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you know when the new episodes drop. We are releasing each episode on Wednesday. You can see the dates there. So if you're watching them much later, you'll have access to all the episodes. So let's jump into it. Today, we're going to cover eradication and recovery. So eradication and recovery is the red boxes in this playbook. And the objective of this phase is to get back to normal operations. What are we doing to get back to normal operations? Of course, we're getting rid of any presence of the intrusion, malicious code, anything that is preventing normal operations or is facilitating a breach where information may be exfilling from your network. So we wanna make sure that we've removed all the malicious activities within our network. The other thing that we're going to be doing and talking about in this is we need to mitigate the vulnerabilities and conditions that led to this breach. We don't want to have this happen again. Any first time breach where we're experiencing some new vector is to a certain degree understandable. We need to learn from it, of course, we need to grow from it, and that's what this is about because you don't wanna be breached by the same thing twice. A key thing to remember is that eradication and recovery is an iterative process. We have our playbook here kind of spaced out a little bit more in that we execute our eradication plan. And remember, it is a plan. This is something that needs to be done and prepared back in the preparations phase. Once we've removed what we think is the malicious code, we again scan for activity related to that, or we also scan uh, adjacent systems or systems that have similar characteristics as what was breached because we want to look for indicators of breach elsewhere. Is an activity detected? If yes, then we want to contain that and then move through the incident playbook again, eradicate that, scan again, and we go through this loop until we no longer detect any activity, then we can move to recovery. So we wanna make sure that we are constantly going through. We don't just eradicate it and then skip straight to recover. We wanna make sure we scan again. So what are the activities that we want to have in our eradication plan? So of course, once we've isolated the machines or resources, we may need to re-image them. If you have gold sources, this will be the quickest way to do it. If not, you may have to build from scratch. Also realize you need to know something about the type of breach and about the type of malicious code or vectors being used because if it's something like a rootkit, you may just have to rebuild or replace the hardware depending on the system. One thing you should do is reset all the passwords. The playbook specifies on compromised accounts, but Maybe you should expand that to reset passwords on all relevant accounts, anybody that has access to a system just to be safe that they're not only using certain accounts, but also have more. We're gonna to continue to monitor for malicious activity. And one of the things that you need to have during this phase is patience. You want to wait and monitor the network for any reoccurrences, pop-ups of new malicious activity. Remember in the containment phase that we talked about, you wanna work on containing in a stealthy way. You don't want to tip off the attacker that you're working on containment. This could cause them to move to other areas. The same thing applies here during eradication. So we want to, as we begin to remove that code from the contained areas, we want to sit and wait and watch to make sure that malicious activity doesn't begin to pop up in other areas. This is hard, you wanna get back in business as soon as possible, totally understandable, 
but you don't want to get back, think you're back into normal and still have malicious activity going on in your network. So now we've eradicated all of the malicious code. We have a clean house. How do we go about recovering? The playbook mentions the main challenges of this phase are confirming that remediation has been successful. Again, this comes into that patience portion where you need to be watching and monitoring your network based on your baseline normal. Again, coming back to that important piece of the playbook of knowing your normal. Then we're going to adjust our policies and procedures in our tech here, especially within the zero trust access rules. Remember, we're trying to protect that data. We know we should know at this point a little bit about how the malicious actor gained access to our network and know how we can adjust at least in a little bit to prevent this from happening again. We'll learn more in our post breach activity, but for right now, we can do some minor adjustments to adjust for what just happened. We're gonna of course test our new system and implementations and we're going to adjust our baseline normal so that any changes that we've made are now taken into consideration when we look in the future at breaches or when we're testing and practicing and training, we still have that baseline normal. So make sure we're always updating our normal and this is a good place to do it during that recovery phase. Related to the patient's aspect of eradication, the key aspect to the recovery phase is to have enhanced vigilance and controls in place to validate that the recovery plan has been successfully executed. You want to be able to validate that your system is secure so that you can go back to fulfilling your agency's mission Make sure you have a plan and a baseline that you can compare against to make sure that you're operating in a secure manner. One last consideration when you are in the recovery and eradication phase is you wanna make sure that you forensically have collected and preserved any data that would need to go to law enforcement or CISA for the necessary reporting. All right, so that is eradication and recovery. Next week, we're going to talk about the post-incident activities. What do we do after we're back up and normal? So check back in next week and we will cover that. Thanks again for watching.